the going gets tough, the tough get going. Hello, I'm Kyle Rudder, and in this week's Investor Spotlight, we take a look at Rio Tinto's first half 23 results and see how they were met by investors and what the outlook is. And to help me put this issue under the spotlight this week, Danny Akie from Ausbiz joins me now. Danny, thank you so much, of course, once again. Let's just talk about what we learned from the results. Was it a hit or a miss? Pretty much a miss. And uh, we are talking softer commodity prices that fed through and also higher costs for the company. So they were also cycling a very high base effect from last year. But I think investors were disappointed because it was a miss and also they cut the dividend by about 30%. So they're maintaining a 50% payout ratio but earnings effectively came down uh, depending on which line you take, whether it's EBITDA or net earnings between 45 and 30%. So really <clears throat> just shows you very cyclical company still. Yeah. And uh, you know they're still very heavily exposed to iron ore. So iron ore generates 78% of their earnings and 90% of that comes from the Pilbara. Very interesting. So let's just talk about the commodity story at the moment, because as you alluded to, it's come down uh, from its highs of a few years ago. There was a bit of a boom there for for Rio Tinto profits. But what did the company say about commodity prices and, and maybe the outlook as well? Yeah, so they made the point that um, <clears throat> in real terms, um, iron ore prices are lower than they were 10 years ago. And really, this is, um, you know, there's, there's lots of great information actually um, in their pack that they did, um, their earnings pack. And the main thing that they're focusing on at the moment is investing for the future rather than relying on commodity prices picking up. So for them, it's diversification, investing for the future, getting their costs down. They are looking at some of those inflationary pressures, such as higher oil prices and diesel prices, is starting to flow out over the second half of the year. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, um, most of their earnings growth in the future comes from expansion of the existing iron ore operations, new projects coming on stream, and just uh, investing for the future and keeping, as I said, costs under control. And when you say investing in the future, is this another miner that's looking to try and transition its business to be much more well friendly to the kind of green shift that we're all seeing across the globe? Yeah, so there's <coughs> quite a few moving parts here. So they do produce alumina, which is heavily um, in intensive in terms of carbon. And they have taken a hit in terms of having to write down in this first half over 800 million for not meeting their scope one emissions targets. They're probably going to have to buy in credits. But where they are expanding is into copper and they've got this massive massive joint venture mine called Oyu Tolgo which is an underground copper mine in Mongolia which is going to start to contribute and as we all know copper is one of those um, metals that everybody wants for the green transition so that is expected to basically generate um, about 30 percent of EBITDA from copper going out to around 2026 which is really really important the other thing in terms of growth they do have some lithium exposure but it's really really quite small um, the main other big thing for them is a huge project in Africa in Guinea, which is Samandu, which is a joint venture with three other joint venture partners. And at the moment, they haven't fully committed to the project because it's a 30-year project. It is with the Chinese. They all need to sign off. But that potentially is a kicker down, down the track. Interesting. Okay, so we saw the share price drop after the results. Yep. How have the broker community uh, responded to the numbers? And I mean, do we have a sense of the outlook here? Yeah, it's really, really split. So at the bottom end, you've got Audmanet, which I think is uh, white labelling Morningstar. And they are very, very low in terms of what they are actually looking at. So they have a $107 price target, which compares to Goldman Sachs, which is much more bullish at $126. A lot of this depends on the iron ore forecast going forward. So for example, Goldman's is sitting at the iron ore price, which did hit 
$160 a tonne a couple of years ago, halving to around 84, 85, whereas Ordmanet are down at 60. And it does have a material impact, but in terms of there, we've got a nice summary from FN Arena. You can see an overweight from Morgan Stanley. Pretty much it's kind of trading around um, FN Arena's share price target of around $114 a share. But if you broaden the scope um, with Refinitiv, there's a couple of strong buy recommendations, five buys, three holes and three sells. So really, it all goes back to China and what you think is going to happen with iron ore, which you and I both know is is a daily surprise in terms of what's going on there with the stimulus and then what the uh, punters are doing in the futures market. Of course, like all of us watching very carefully what China does to get a sense of, well, obviously the benefits of the company and the economy too. But uh, Danny, really appreciate the insights as always. Danny and Kia there. Okay, well that does it for this edition of IG's Investor Spotlight. Join in next week. We'll put another investment issue under the spotlight.